Uh, my name is Johan Zimmern. I am the Solutions Marketing Manager at Aruba. I just started four months ago, so I'm new to not only Aruba, but I'm new to the facility management space. So thanks for allowing me to present to you today. I think because we're a really small group, if you want to come forward, we could have a more intimate <laughs> conversation. If not, uh, stay where you are. Um, but the idea is today to give you a brief overview of Aruba Networks as a company, talk a little bit about uh, what we're doing in the education space, and I'll take about 15 minutes, and then Charlie will talk about Space IQ. Uh, if you're familiar with Space IQ, have heard of them. They were recently acquired by WeWorks, and he will talk a little bit more. I don't know how much you can disclose, but that I think that uh, just was announced two days ago. That's all I know too. That's all, <laughs> all you know. This week. So, who knows about the Aruba? Anybody heard of Aruba? Other than the the island of Aruba? Nobody. Have you heard of HP? Yes, you have. Uh, Aruba is a company that was founded in 2002, Aruba Networks, and was focused on building wireless networks. They sort of saw the mobile world coming uh, early on, even before the iPhone 3 was launched in 2007, and have uh, really built an entire strategy around mobile first. They were acquired by HP in 2015, and that was right before HP split into two companies, HP Inc. for printers and servers, uh, for printers and uh, computers and HP Enterprise for servers, backend, and all of the networking. So HP Enterprise is the company I work for, but we're keeping Aruba Networks as a separate company for now. I don't know how much longer. But the Aruba brand and the Aruba networking technology is all around connectivity, uh, connectivity at the edge, uh, as they call it in our field. And in education, we're really looking towards the interaction of places people and things, uh, a lot around IoT, the Internet of Things, how do you integrate not just backend and facility management, IoT on HVAC and uh, thermostats and blinds and lighting, uh, but also supporting the students that are coming with a lot of devices uh, on campus and need to be supported. We work with hundreds of universities, not just in the United States, but overseas as well. Uh, some of the largest ones include Indiana University, Ohio State University, with uh, I think Indiana with close to 100,000 students. Uh, Ohio has recently uh, finished, I think they have over 20,000 access points across their multiple buildings, uh, and they're leveraging that technology to provide not just connect connections um, on campus for academic uh, use, but also outdoors and stadiums and, and, and other areas. The most important part at any university is obviously student outcomes, student learning. Uh, our in intent within the Aruba Networks environment is to serve students where they are. Um, it's the connectivity, uh, you know, being able to access learning management systems, being able to submit content on a Friday night at midnight and making sure that all of that works well. And that combines both the back end with uh, switches, controllers, and all the way to access points uh, on the uh, wireless side. We want to make sure that students have an easy way to get around campus, and I'll talk about a little bit more uh, when we get to our uh, beacons technology. And on the, uh, on the administrator side, clearly the onboarding of new IoT de devices is becoming more and more important uh, and necessary as technology uh, comes onto campus and different entities are bringing new and connected network devices uh, into use. Uh, we recently finished a project at uh, Texas A&M a &M University. Uh, the engineering building recently finished with uh, all of the wired, all of the wireless, and all of our beacon technology, and are offering wayfinding for students that are coming on campus, being able to do that across multiple floors. So it's really an indoor solution utilizing the Bluetooth technology. And that brings me to the beacons. So we have standalone beacons, very small devices. They look large here, but they're no more than this in size. They uh, offer battery-powered Bluetooth, and batteries last between three and four years. And they can be placed anywhere on campus. In addition, what's really more important is that we are putting Bluetooth and Zigbee technology into the access points. And um, especially the newer generation of access points will now support Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax. 
and include the blue te technology right in the, the access points. And then we have a company called Meridian, which we purchased in 2016. And Meridian built a cloud uh, platform that allows you to take advantage of the, the beacon technology. With the beacons in place or the access points that have Bluetooth integrated, you can build out an entire network uh, and a mapping system for all of the floors within your buildings, multiple buildings, and being able to uh, do the wayfinding and blue dot wayfinding like you would with Google Maps uh, on GPS. And then we also have a map uh, application, an, an app maker application that allows you to build a really simple, easy to start uh, app that would allow you to roll this out in a pretty uh, quick time frame. We have a lot of universities who like this to start, but then usually within a year or so, they build it into their own app. So we have APIs and SDKs that allows you to take advantage of these beacon technologies to build that into the app directly. Location services, and I'd love to open it up to for questions. Like location services, I think fairly new on campus. Um, some people think it's necessary, important next steps in, in enabling um, parents, for instance, to come onto campus and do self-guided tours, or students and faculty members to be able to find their way around, especially when they're new on campus. Um, I'd love to hear if any of you have implemented wayfinding, or, or is that a particular interest on your campus? Is that no? <laughs> well, does this integrate with ArcGIS indoors? I do not know. I would have to do some research. Uh, we were talking to Esri and others and trying to figure out where it all ties in together, but I think they have ways to get out to the, the location itself, and I can do research and find out. So otherwise, nobody in this room on the wayfinding? No. And I will not go into great detail, but we have partnerships with many other IoT vendors in the space. We're basically using the access point as a gateway for IoT onboarding. Um, and wayfinding is only one of them. There's uh, obviously other opportunities for notifications on campus. If you're close to the bookstore, the bookstore could offer discounts. If you're close to the theater, could be notifications for people who are in the proximity and saying, hey, there's an event at the theater. So there's lots of different ideas. Uh, point of purchase um, service um, offerings in the bookstore can be tied into IoT. So there's a lot of different partners that we work with that all uh, tie into our platform. And uh, lastly, there's clearly an opportunity um, for asset tagging. Um, that may be something why you're here. If you're not here for wayfinding, uh, the ability to tag valuable assets within your campus and actually have real-time information about them. Uh, and I didn't have an image for the asset tags, but there are also small Bluetooth uh, uh, tags that can be attached to healthcare uh, MRI systems that are movable and you want to know where they are, not just that you have them and that, that they're worth $20,000, but you want to know where they've moved and if you need access to them uh, quickly. And that's, that's actually this image uh, for the asset tracking. And there's a small image. It's hard to see. It's a small, uh, round little plastic piece that can attach to any asset within your building environment. Uh, and then throughout the Bluetooth triangulation connected to your phone, there's an easy way to use the mapping and to locate that directly. So I know in, in the sense of time here, we only have a small <laughs> Uh, a window here, but I do want to just summarize what Aruba does in the space. If you're not familiar with us, uh, we obviously in a, a place uh, that is full of other vendors, there's Cisco and, and, and others uh, in this space, but we are with the education market, uh, we are probably over 50% of the uh, uh, education market uh, with Aruba Wireless and we're seeing a great interest in this new beacon technology. So wayfinding is, is one big piece, notifications uh, and local locations. Location sharing is another use case where individuals can find each other. Uh, it's very, very similar to what uh, Google does with GPS uh, sharing. And then an in intelligent integration, uh, uh, obviously, for you to understand where are the people within my environment? Are the labs being used? I had some conversations yesterday with uh, Oregon University, they're just trying to figure out 
who wears the space, who owns the space, who's managing it, and is it in use? Can we use it for something else? Is it a lab for 50, but it's commonly only used by 10? Is it a centralized managed lab? Is it a facility departmental lab? Uh, and creating the ability to utilize the tags, the asset tags, as well as the beacons to find out location use within your campus gives you uh, far more visibility in uh, uh, how you want to change in the future. Um, and that was my brief introduction to Aruba. If you have any questions, I will be here through tonight and tomorrow early morning. And with that, I'll pass it on to Charlie, who invited me to be here and uh, wanted to speak about Space IQ. So thanks, Charlie. Thank you, Johan. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? Let's take care of this. Did everybody drop a card at my table? Because I'm raffling off an Echo Dot. Did everyone get in? Did anyone not? You want to drop it now? Come on, man. You may, you may actually empty that one, because if they're not here, it's true. you'll be pulling a lot of cards. It's true. Well, I know Devon. There we go. There we go. We'll just go through them until... All right, all right, all right. All right. You got one? Come on. All right. You good? All right. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Let's see. I don't know who I'm grabbing. Is Thomas Mitchell here? Thomas Mitchell. Congrats. It was $20 on Prime Day, so <laughs> don't ever say that I never gave you anything. So welcome, everybody, to Texas. I'm Charlie Newell with Space IQ. You heard the news. We were acquired by WeWork. It's been a crazy week for me personally, going learning about that, coming to Texas, eating some fine barbecue last night. You see my experience in this field. I don't need to really talk about it. Uh, so I'll just be totally blunt. We primarily originally thought of ourselves for the workplace, but we are seeing that rapidly expand, and campus has been a recent consideration for us, and we are growing. UC Berkeley is uh, one of our clients, um, LeapFrog, also in the educational space. A lot of these other logos you probably recognize. I don't need to talk about how we were, you know, IDC, something of the year, but uh, long story short, Let's talk about the evolution of things, starting with UT right here in Austin, the evolution of mascots. You may or may not have known that the original mascot was a dog named Pig Belmont. I don't know who named him, uh, but that was him. And the rumor was that he urinated on their flag and they shot him and they were like, we need something more Texan. <laughs> so that's not true. I just made that up. Um, they came up with a bull named Bevo, and I don't know who was in charge of naming these mascots, but whatever. So things change, folks. Um, I talked about this real briefly. I actually used to work on those PBX systems. That was my first IT grunt job, programming PBX systems, doing like Unix you know, line interface and all that stuff. Um, and then we talked about how BlackBerry changed the way people worked, right? Changed the way people communicated. Um, I know. Johan works from home, I work from home. We can literally work from anywhere. And then took it a step further, the iPhone, to a lesser degree, yes, uh, Android, but really the iPhone changed the way. Sorry you missed our drawing, but somebody already won. So, um, but welcome. Um, the iPhone changed everything because not only did they take it a step further in terms of, you know, the iPhones of just a few years ago, were more powerful than the supercomputers of like even the 80s and early 90s, right? So it's amazing that this thing in our pocket, but what it really did is it gave anybody the opportunity to create an app that can work seamlessly within the iPhone environment. So taking that idea, um, also the evolution of how people learn, right? Uh, students are no longer necessarily tied to desks. There's e-learning, they, they can work from multiple campuses around the world, but certainly don't want to be stuck in a desk uh, today. And so campuses, in my opinion, humbly offered my own opinion, have been slower to adopt technological changes, and it could be for a variety of reasons, because budget is diverted, of course, to the football programs and things like that. But if you think about it, places of learning should have the latest and greatest technology because we are raising the next generation of technologists and future workers and things like that. So some forward-thinking campuses are recognizing that. And whoop, 
These are some of the challenges. Obviously, I'll speak from my own experience. The first day I stepped onto LSU campus, uh, you know, it was 36,000 students at the time. And it was just like a little city, right? Finding anything. And they have those big uh, 3D maps that were colored in. And you're just like looking at it. And there's hundreds of buildings. And trying to find your way around was so daunting and overwhelming for me. And I'm literally asking people, hey, do you know this building? No, I don't know it. Um, and it made me feel even lonely, I remember, at the time. So students now want to be able to integrate right into their smartphone. Where am I? Where am I going? And this really highlights our partnership with Aruba, which I'll talk about more in a minute. But So what Space IQ does is we manage all of the, we can manage all of the floor plans, all of the operational moves, changes, stacks, we also can provide a, a way for uh, students or faculty to book themselves a room, a desk, whether that's conference room, whether that's a learning or training room, and also because of our integration with Aruba, wayfinding and the ability to actually follow people throughout campus and find out and locate people. Geolocation is the buzzword, but so. Um, this is kind of our application stack, right? Kind of what I described, employee or room finding, hoteling spaces, real estate analytics. The analytics portion of ours is not based just on our own system, which is powerful and it's great, uh, but we also can pull from other disparate systems. So what we try to do is we try to design our platform like the iOS kind of thinking. We want to have a holistic workplace or campus um, management system that can pull data in from multiple points, not just from our own. Most of the players previous to us operated kind of like the BlackBerry or even that PBX system, right? They created a system that was great for managing what they had as long as you, every, everything that you needed was within their system. But if you needed to pull in data from this application or that application, uh, kind of previous to us, it, it didn't exist, or if it did exist, it was like the old buzzword, hey, we have an API. You can work through our API. But that means you're going to have to do the development work or you're going to have to pay us an exorbitant sum. So what we did is we created an integration platform that can pull in from multiple data points. So we have, like the iPhone, our own kind of store, if you will, that has multiple applications. This is the software side. You recognize Slack and things like that. So uh, exchange hosted rooms, service now, ticketing and things like that. So that can also empower the campus professionals who are working on campus uh, that get a ticket request from some student in the library where the light is broken. He now can say, you know what, I'm going to write a ticket, boom, it's going to go right to the team that's responsible for that. And they're going to know where that is because it's geolocated and tied through the Aruba system, right? We also can pull in from legacy systems, there's our partnership right there, multiple sensors as well. So, bi-directional integration. That basically means we have the ability to build or pull in floor plans through our system. We have a direct integration with AutoCAD. We are, to our knowledge, the only one who has that integration, which has long been considered the holy grail for managing the workplace uh, floor plan scenarios, right? So that means any changes that the architects make will automatically get updated into our system, but we also have the ability to map build in our system and push it back to AutoCAD as well. But in the same way, uh, Aruba has their own floor plans that they can upload and they can kind of overlay ours. And the way that it works on campus is like, there's a beacon here, there's a beacon in the hallway, there's a beacon you know, down the hall. If I walk out, it can essentially read my phone as I'm walking through, either giving me direction through their app or ours, and telling me where I need to go if I'm trying to find like, you know, chemistry 101 or whatever it is. Also, we do have the ability, and it's, some people think it's creepy, um, some people call it stalky. We can actually follow people as they're walking as well, if you choose to enable that. And it would look like a little blue dot going on the floor plan. So the beacons are actually picking up my signal and tracking me as I'm walking or trying to find my way. Okay, and this is just highlighting on what Johan already talked about, right? Updates in real time, maps and people. The ability to book a meeting room or desk is huge. 
And it can be done as a standalone in our system, or we can integrate with third parties, as I mentioned, if you already have an existing system. But obviously, the less complexity, the better. Uh, st student's current location, that was the tracking tool, the stalking tool I was talking about. Blue dot turn by turn wayfinding as well. Thank you. Yes, questions. Perfect timing. So I, I missed part of the presentation. Um, Sorry, you're going to have to leave, sir. No. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you failed, buddy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what type of beacon system do you use? Well, I, I think Space IQ integrates with multiple uh, systems, and I presented earlier about uh, Aruba's. Bluetooth beacons that are either standalone Bluetooth beacons or they're integrated in our access points for wireless access points. Is everybody familiar with beacon technology? Do you, anybody use a, uh, like a Wi-Fi speaker, a Bluetooth speaker? Like, I got a Bose one. It's the same technology. So it kind of gives you the same distance. But what they do is they essentially place them strategically throughout an organization or you know, a campus and it just, your phone is automatically connecting, 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 or if it's connected to the Wi-Fi access points, it's able to track you and feed that back into our system on the back end. All right, yes, questions? So on the map that I saw that was building a floor plan level by floor, should I be moving down to that level? Could I scale back up and do it by building a road and causeway? Yeah, it would have to be updated in the in the mapping system. How it actually happens, that, that I would have to do some more research. But yes, yeah. but that's not the beacon, that's that has nothing to do with the beacon. That has to do with them. If you're working with Esri or other mapping technology, then that, that requires obviously manual intervention. If there's some pathway that's closed, we were just talking about this in our staff meeting the other day because um, you know there's been some requests to integrate into Google Maps, right? So that. Google Maps now can, you know, take a huge campus and you can drop pins and things like here's the UC, here's this restaurant, here's whatever uh, land points you want to make. Um, and so I think we are road mapping that to be able to do that. So it can go outside your floor plan and actually, but that's more, um, yeah, there's a little bit of manual work that would happen for that. Like dropping I, pins. I think, I think like. the beauty about indoor location mapping is that you can now get a turn by turn direction. You got to go down the stairs or you take the elevator. If you want to find an ADA ramp access that you know, it gets you to the places in, in horizontal and vertical. GPS on Google can do your, your horizontal layer, but not the vertical layer. But it's going now. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so I So when you show the data, is it just real time only data or can you, are you uh, recording any of the data? Yes. Yeah, our, our reporting is quite robust, and we're actually even building on it. Um, analytics is a whole other thing. But because we have the ability to pull data from so many things, we've built some very good dashboards and reports, right? Um, but the hunger for data, because it drives decision making so strongly, uh, we're going to take that a step further and actually probably use more like a third party BI tool. We're not sure, like Looker or one of these other companies that. Um, do, you, do you work with lighting systems like Enlighted or um, Lutron or any of that stuff? Because they have built in beacons. That, that also has been a request. I don't know of those specific ones, but our. our um, Just because every line we're putting in, like in our new construction, has these. And so, yeah. you know, to pinpoint somebody in a room is easy now. Because, yeah. you know, you've got 30 lights in there. Yeah. You know, you can triangulate. Yeah, we're, we're pretty agnostic when it comes <coughs> to integrating. So, What technology are those using? That's, that's what I'm still trying to figure oh, out. Oh, I see. Gotcha. The, yeah. the DLC visual lighting. Is it, they all use the same thing? Okay. All the lighting manufacturers. And you're saying you're using the lights to determine whether somebody's sitting at a desk? Yeah, well, that's, that's an ox sensor, which is different, but it actually has a Bluetooth sensor in there that can communicate with an app and say. Got it. And then. You know, I'm sitting here, there's all these lights. It'll triangulate me to say, oh, I'm Interesting. Far from that one, yeah. I'm that far from that one. It's so it's similar technology to, yeah. Seat, right? Got it. It's yeah. the same fingerprinting we did. Yeah. 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 Um, 
so two questions. Sure. We're working with Apple closely um, on large infrastructure and aviation. So we're using IMDF, which is an indoor mapping data format mm -hmm. that Esri is also using. So I see this becoming a standard yeah. at some point. Um, and Autodesk is also tied to it, but did you guys get to that level of having a standard for wall storage frame in your converter? And the second question was, I love Aruba. So if I get a client that has Cisco access points, can SpaceX do the same thing? Yeah. We, we do integrate with Cisco as well. But your first question, is that regarding like floor planning? Yeah, there's a and mapping? that Apple maps. So yeah. Remember, you guys are doing this for the, on the owner side. Yeah. But Apple Maps wants to do it for Apple. They yeah. want indoor standards. Uh, so they have a bigger standard that even Google's following uh, for the amount of flavors that come over into CAD file and BIM file. We're, we're, like I said, we're pretty agnostic and we're growing by the quarter, honestly. And now that we have WeWork money, uh, I expect that to scale even way, way faster. Absolutely. So, uh, I mean, that's why they chose us. It's like, they realize it's not enough for them to just buy up a bunch of real estate and try to lease it. They have to, especially, they're gonna IPO soon here. They have to create themselves as a technology company, offer you, and I think, I could see when WeWork even integrating with campus, Campus is looking for more space or to more effectively manage their space. So, is IMDF an independent format? That yeah, it's an independent format yeah. that everyone can use. But Apple's going heavy into this game. Yeah. They want all everyone's interior data for their users. Yeah, right. absolutely. Um, you can imagine the standards. Yeah. It's a lot of fighting going on, though, I think, in this space. Any other questions? We have one minute. Is asset tracking on anyone's radar in terms of, I keep hearing healthcare is sort of the main area where moving MRI machines is a challenge when nurses can't find what they're looking for. But I don't know about universities, is that a concern? Those are your fixed assets that you can walk around. <laughs> Hopefully they don't work around, yeah. <laughs> Do you imagine tracking how many students actually show up for class, for instance? It's like crazy. But anyway, I digress. Thank you all.